Laughter, an essay on the meaning of comic by Henry Bergson. What does laughter mean? What is the basal element in the laughable? What common ground can we find between the grimace of a Mary Andrew, a play upon words, an equivocal situation in a burlesque and a scene of high comedy? What method of distillation will yield us invariably the same essence from which so many different products borrow either their obtrusive odor or their delicate perfume? The greatest of thinkers, from Aristotle downwards, have tackled this little problem, which has a knack of baffling every effort, of slipping away and escaping, only to bob up again, a pert challenge flung at the philosophic speculation. Our excuse for attacking the problem in our turn must lie in the fact that we shall not aim at imprisoning the comic spirit within a definition we regard it above all as a living thing. However trivial it may be, we shall treat it with the respect due to life. We shall confine ourselves to watching it grow and expand, passing by imperceptible gradations from one form to another. It will be seen to achieve the strangest metamorphoses. We shall disdain nothing we have seen. Maybe we have, maybe we may gain from this prolonged contact. For the matter of that, something more flexible than an abstract definition, a practical, intimate acquaintance, such as springs from a long companionship. And maybe we may also find that unintentionally we have made an acquaintance that is useful. For the comic spirit has a logic of its own, even in its wildest eccentricities. It has a method in his madness. It dreams, I admit, but it conjures up in its dreams visions that are at once accepted and understood by the whole of a social group. Can it then fail to throw light for us on the way that human imagination works, and more particularly social, collective, and popular imagination, begotten of real life and akin to art, should it not also have something of its own to tell us about art and life? At the outset, we shall put forward three observations which we looked upon as fundamental. They have less bearing on the actually comic than on the field within which it must be sought. So this is the preface of the the essay on laughter and the meaning of comedy, basically by Henry Bergson. This is the preface, there's several parts of it, so it's going to be uploaded onto YouTube by parts, so it can be digested easily and explained. Now, keep in mind, the Henry Bergson is proposing that we investigate laughter, and why do we laugh at something communicable? And it has been speculated by philosophers from Aristotle to this notable ph philosopher in their field and and what does it mean to laugh that's that's very it's a very interesting question because when we laugh at something we're we're expressing that we enjoy it or in some way in some way the laughter is an expression of our happiness it that could be one one definition or one reason one meaning that laughter provides because although when you think of laughter or comedy you think of happy things but um Henry Henry Bergson proposed that we cannot limit comedy and laughter into just a single definition such as a play upon words or a scene of high comedy or an equal equivocal situation in a burlesque meaning basically that it's open to more than one interpretation you know like how jokes have a play on words or has different meanings uh, to come up with an example right away it seems a bit a bit difficult but it's it's kind of like the knock knock joke where you say knock knock who's there 
and you say banana and then you keep on repeating knock knock and then finally the other guy will get frustrated he'll be like who's there and you'll be like orange and he's like orange who and it's like orange you glad i didn't say banana that would be the equal vocals uh, situation where it would denote laughter because the interpretation for that scene would be the fruit orange also sounds similar to the word orange aren't you something like that comedy is comedy is an interesting subject to study about because essentially it's it has to be understood but the way it's understood it has to have like a strict meaning for example when you read a book uh an english literature book there you can have multiple interpretation of what does this all mean however with comedy there's the fact that a comedical joke is able to create laughter out of a multitude of audiences suggests and implies that there is one meaning because in order for all of the audiences to laugh they all had to arrive at the conclusion of that same meaning itself that the co- comedian uses so the greatest think- thinkers have tackled this little problem that something as simple as laughter can be so so mm, so it can be such a strange thing to think about that because we laugh like we never really pay much attention to why we laugh or what does it mean to laugh or what does it denote such as we don't really think about what breathing does because we just do it so often so it's a philosophic speculation on what laughter is and and Henry Bergson spe- says that we cannot imprison the comic spirit within a definition mean that comedy cannot be defined itself nor have a definition but yet yet laughter itself is is the the effect of the effect of comedy so i the way i i'm seeing it right now is that comedy and laughter are like causes and effect the cause is the comedy and the effect is the laughter and the funny thing is we regard is that henry bergson also says we regarded above all as a living thing meaning that the the way that jokes work you know you it's only alive for a certain amount of time because there are certain periods and eras where one joke would make sense but if you put it into like the year 2035 it would have no meaning at all, all or it would just lose its humor such as if you use a thanks obama joke back in the 1860s nobody's going to understand who who's obama and what and why are you being so sarcastically thanking him? You know, that joke doesn't work out. And so, comedy and humor is a living thing on its own. However trivial it may be, we shall treat it with the respect due to life, essentially supporting my statement in that that jokes and comedy humor only works in their set of eras and time due to society society and economic poli- economical status where it would make sense such as during the great depression where they used to call um really like poor places uh hoover dams because they were making fun of the president hoover for make because everyone was blaming president hoover on the great depression however it was not essentially his fault and then the the humor just came up with the oh it's a Hoover dam like damn it da- like damn it Hoover kind of like the modern day thanks Obama <laughs> uh, just a little comparison there and let's see we shall confine ourselves to watching it grow and expand because humor does develop 
humor does humor does develop, so it can essentially be treated as a living thing, passing by in perceptible gradation from one form to another. It will be seen to achieve the strangest metamorphoses, meaning that humor, over as generation pass by from one generation to the next, that our humor will evolve and change forms. Um, and the, the, the thing about humor and comedy that Henry Bergson is suggesting is that it is even more flexible than abstract definition, meaning that...